Up today, we're going to be speaking with Mark Douglas, CEO and President at Mountain. Mark, great to see you. Thanks for inviting me. You guys have been making a lot of noise in the connected TV space, and I'd love to just first start by getting to know a little bit more about you and your background and how you took the road to where you are today. Well, me personally, I started as a coding engineer. I'm a self-taught engineer. I've been coding most of my adult life. I like building products, and that led me through a series of companies. Um, Oracle, I was early there back in the day, working with Mark Benioff, Tom Siebel, and others. And Mark Benioff was a director in desktop products division, and I was early engineer in applications division, a director in that division. So that's how he and I met. And Tom Siebel was like starting up Oracle's inside sales team. So this was quite a while ago, but a lot of fun. And then eventually internet infrastructure in the mid nineties. And then moved to LA in 2000, a series of companies I started. Then I moved to LA in the um, early 2000s to lead engineering at eHarmony uh, when online dating was becoming a thing, eHarmony yeah. and Match. And then um, learned a lot about marketing and then eventually um, started Mountain and launched the Mountain to reinvent, essentially reinvent television advertising and make it. And what, and what drew you to the television the space? What happened was actually in 2017, I was meeting with a lot of agencies and asking them what they thought, like not even television, just where they saw marketing going and didn't get a lot of interesting responses. So I asked everyone, what do you think about streaming? Like, what do you think is going to happen with streaming and advertising? And everyone I met with referred to it as, oh, that's way out in the future. Now, this is late 2017. This is not... Right. 2011 and they were like oh this is way out in the future that you know people are going to move slowly it's not going to have much of an impact anytime soon i said well how are you watching tv and they all said oh i have an apple tv i have a roku right. so after a bunch of these meetings i'm like i'm going all in on connected right. tv everyone right. Their behavior and their words were did not. It reminds match me, up. you know, that there was a time when uh, in 2003, I was doing a lot of work targeting college students, and 30% of college students said an Apple was the next uh, computer they were going to buy, but they only had 3% market share. So I knew at that point, I should have right. put every dollar I had in Apple stock at that point. So it sounds like it's sort of the same <laughs> yeah, experience. That makes right. a lot of sense. A similar thing. So I'm like, well, if you all think it's way out in the future, but all your behavior <laughs> is now, then I'll make it now. <laughs> right. And and so we launched the Mountain Performance TV platform in 2018, and it's grown just tremendously. The, mo the biggest thing is it's um, more than two thirds of our customer base are advertising on TV for the first time on Mountain's platform. Brands of all sizes who found television advertising to be, you know, very like expensive, hard to enter that market to become essentially a television advertiser and creative was time consuming. All these things we essentially said with streaming, let's just fix all these things and find a new set of advertisers. And that's what we did. So it sounds like your product mountain essentially creates a programmatic television advertising overlay onto like multiple OT, OTT platforms? Is that a good way to describe Probably, it? But yeah, the simplest way to think about it, it doesn't look anything like this, but I've, um, Luma Partners, the team there founded there, Terry. So Terry, I yeah. did a demo for him a few years ago and he said, this is AdWords for television. You can do it yourself. All the tools are there. You can target any consumer you want. You literally upload your TV commercial into our platform and you're live on every TV network in America. You're live on Hulu, you're live on Roku's content, like anywhere there's ad supported video, we're there with full targeting, full measurement, fully integrated into all your other tools like Google Analytics. So it's, yeah, we had a real vision for it and we've really focused and stuck to that vision and, and it's been an exciting ride. I mean, that's really intriguing. I spend a lot of time on programmatic tools, whether it be Facebook's platform or Google's platform building Suzy's business. I've often tried to get on television because television has this perception of grandeur where people yeah. see you on TV and it builds a type of credibility, almost like out of home does, but even more impactful and has yeah, been yeah. something that has been out of touch for smaller advertisers for so long. So it's incredibly yeah. intriguing. How good is the targeting relative to targeting display or other mediums on the mountain platform? Well, similar targeting data. We partner with Oracle Data Cloud. We partner with LiveRamp for third-party data. For first-party data, we have our own first-party data system that's very 
I think it's very good. And we even allow customers to use CRM data so they can upload lists of, like, let's say they have retail stores, they can take the email addresses and phone numbers they get there and they can upload those into our platform and target there. And that's actually our fastest growing method of targeting for the platform. So obviously we do all marketing, right? And we have, we're fortunate to have Ryan Reynolds leading and George Dewey, our CMO, leading our marketing, plus some other people on Team Reagan and Ali. And so we use our own platform. That's our number two source of leads is mountain advertising our brand right you're, you're eating your own dog food our number one by the way is is organic search on google that google which is you know the demo video we did with the um ghost pepper and steve-o so the so organic search is number one and mountain's own platform is our that's number incredible two. so we have to get on that yeah. Susie, and using that if it's working for you guys i'd love to figure yeah. that out so we'll talk to you guys afterwards so tell us about ryan reynolds how did that relationship come about and kind of what role is he playing as you continue to build your brand in the space? Sure. So Ryan's our chief creative officer. And so he's impacting the company in a number of different ways. So one, he's obviously very involved in Mountain's own marketing effort and building the yeah. Mountain brand. But he also works with our customers. So if you go back to something I said, I think I said a moment ago, two thirds of our customer base have never advertised on TV before. So we basic, they don't have TV commercials. Right. And so right around the time I met Ryan, which was last April, we were trying to figure out like, how do we make that easier for our customers? And Ryan has maximum effort marketing, his, the marketing agency he created after the uh, for, to market the original Deadpool movie and, and all his movies after that. And so it just kind of, as they say, it's like this marriage, just a, it was love at first sight kind of deal. Right. So, you know, we have, we, we have this need and he has this agency and we just instantly connected over, you know, how we can show people and build a solution so that our customers could build TV ads, but do it cost effectively. What he calls fast advertising, where you can just do it quickly, cost yeah. effectively, like a TV commercial. The amount of money people spend on TV commercials compared to the amount of money they spend on like a video on an ad for TikTok or Instagram, it just doesn't make yeah. sense. I mean, your addressable is, market is, is yeah. the biggest it gets, right? I right. mean, that's right. where all the most of the money still goes in advertising, despite Google yeah. and Facebook's meteoric rise. I mean, most of the big brands are spending on television, but the small brands, to your point, it hasn't been accessible to them. Yeah, and I, I totally agree. And then what was interesting when I first met Ryan, he said something very interesting to me. He said he was he said it took me eight it took him eight years to make Deadpool, but if he creates a thirty second commercial, that could be done in like two days and right. more people see it than right. the movie. Right. <laughs> and could, have bigger, could have a bigger business impact than the movie. Right, yeah. So his he I mean he's truly like this person that just loves to put out ideas and things that are culturally relevant. And so with advertising, he can just do that at the, like constantly and he loves doing it. So it's been, it's been amazing working together. And I don't know, it just, it just happened. It, like it took literally like less than a week for us to go from meeting each other and his team to wall, well, like, let's do this. Let, let's make, let's have maximum effort and mountain um, or become one company. And what's interesting is a lot of times when companies work with celebrities, you know, they're not really involved in the business. They're just the figurehead. But Ryan is really, truly a prolific entrepreneur and has been involved in so much more than Hollywood and so much more than acting. Yeah. So he's someone that's a true value add, not just somebody you're slapping next to your brand's name to build extra credibility with the masses. Yeah, I mean, Ryan picks up the phone. Like, Ryan right. makes calls. He does sales calls for Mountain. It's, wow. it's pretty... I, there's no one I've seen... We'll end... <laughs> Well, this is probably a good time to start talking about right, but it's the biggest compliment. I've never seen anyone that works as hard as him. I mean, he gets up early, he works a long day, but he, you know, he, we all are doing stuff that we really enjoy doing. So, I mean, we could go on and on and on, but yeah. that, that was the most, almost shocking thing. It was like, I send him a text message and he's reading it at like 4.30 in the morning after he slept for the night. Not, the, right. not He's not staggering home at 4.30 in the morning. So one of the, you know, obviously we've seen a major shift in advertising from 
brand messaging to much more performance bottom funnel. And obviously that's almost had diminishing returns over time as we've seen, especially recently that uh, Apple's iOS 14 changes, which makes it harder to, to track. But that being said, I mean, a lot of advertisers, especially in this economy, still are focused on ROI. So the one thing that yeah. differentiates television from digital is I think it's more challenging to measure, right? Or is it? How does Mountain yeah. look at measurement and the impact of its, of its ads on, on its end user? Well, so we call our platform Mountain Performance TV. So it's all about all the tools to do it, right, for an agency or- To do what? To do, to track? To track. All the media buying is fully automated and then uh -huh. we track all the visits and the conversions that come from that. How? And so you're right. You can't, you can't click on a TV ad. Right. So we use household IP and other signals. Oh, wow. To essentially cross device attribution. So that's something that like Google and, and Meta do. Now they use logins, right? Because they sure. track across devices. We use the household IP as the primary signal for that. And that's a core part of the value that we deliver. And it's why we, you know, big part why we call it performance TV. This, so there are virtually the, relatively few brand advertising campaigns running on our platform because all of our customers, like you said, are focused on return on ad spend, cost per acquisition. And even the brand advertisers, when they now have the ability to do that for television, to think of TV as a performance channel, you know, they do. And 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 when you think of some of the biggest performance advertisers, like someone like Geico, like 15 minutes can save you 15% or more on your car insurance, that's probably the most well-known call to action in the history of advertising. Like that is performance advertising. Absolutely. Now they had to scale to be able to just, you know, do that on TV without a platform by Mount, like Mountain, but we brought that kind of ability to essentially any size advertiser. And we have um, multi-billion dollar brands on our platform. We have mid-sized brands. It's a pretty broad cross set. You'd be surprised some of the larger brands, especially in retail, that are just not comfortable doing TV advertising without all the data that we're talking about. Or you think of internet brands, how many internet brands do you see on television? It's a, they, they want the data to do it, even though they know right. it's a powerful me. Right, yeah. and you said something interesting, you can't click on a TV ad, but I've been saying yeah. for years, I think the TV ultimately is gonna become a giant iPad hanging on your wall. And you look at, you know, the, the, the form factor of Apple TV, right? And it looks a lot like an iPad. And ultimately, I think that TVs will become touchscreens and, and you will be able to interact with them and you will be able to click through. And I think you guys yeah, are just I mean, kind of getting out of it. Yeah, we would love, I mean, if they're, if Samsung or LG or any, or a young emergent startup is listening, count us in willing to test that with you. It brought back a memory of memes when the first... Remember when iPhones were really tiny and then of they course. finally came out with one the size of a Samsung? Yep. I remember seeing a lot of memes. Uh, I saw one where these guys were in the back of a taxi handing each other a TV, pretending that was an iPhone because they were now so large and it made me laugh when yeah. you mentioned that, <laughs> that, that TVs... TVs are going to become like that, that interactive yeah. experience. In the meantime, I do believe that the TV, the physical device of the TV is almost a commodity in the overall ecosystem, right? Yeah. And it's razor yeah. thin margins. And one thing I've often thought would happen is a company like Apple or Amazon would buy a Vizio, uh, you know, and then give away those TVs almost for free, almost like what they're doing with the, yeah. um, you know, Alexa devices. So then they can essentially control the ecosystem, control the rails. What are your thoughts on that in terms of the role of the physical TV device as part of the overall ecosystem? Is that something that's going to ultimately get commoditized? Well, I think most people consider it commoditized now. And I think right. there's no more disappointing product from Apple than the current Apple TV. Right. <laughs> I, I think but it's not even a TV. Are, that's the thing. People think Apple TV is a TV. It's not a TV. Like, they could make a TV right. and maybe it'd be and less disappointing if it did. Yeah. So I think the, the, um, I do think it's commoditized even right. Although I think increasingly the software you see in it is considered very valuable and you see a lot of TV manufacturers becoming part of the television ecosystem, Correct. which kind of Roku the television advertising ecosystem, I should say, which Roku kind of led the way on. So I think yeah. there's still a lot of innovation to come there. And I don't think the television viewing experience for the next 20 years, or even 10 years is like done. Like, we're, no way. Okay, we're, we're done. Because we lived with one experience 
for a very long time, right? Like we had just like over the air, you got five channels to watch. Then we got cable, which yeah. is, you know, this over, and now we have streaming. I think obviously streaming is the way of delivering, but I think the experience for the consumer still has a ways to go in terms of making it really, really seamless and having just an incredible viewing device to do, to, to watch. I agree a hundred percent. And, you know, talking about your industry, we're talking at a really pivotal time. It was just announced by Nielsen last week. I'm sure you saw this, that streaming viewership actually surpassed cable for the first time. And, and that was from Nielsen. So here you are, you talk about the conversations you have with that agencies in terms of how much now streaming has overtaken cable. You know, what's interesting about that, even in late 2017 and then 2018, when we launched our platform, there was already a half a million households a month switching from cable to streaming, like going all in on streaming. Yep. And if you just did the math, you just are like, okay, that's an unrelent, that's a city a month that is saying, I don't want cable anymore. Like right. I, I want all streaming experience. So if you just did the math, this was an inevitable march towards streaming. And at some point, you know, essentially cable is not even a mainstream product anymore. Obviously yeah. there's even more television viewing, but you know, I, if anything, it's going to accelerate from here in terms of now streaming being larger than cable. And as you know, Netflix recently announced that they're partnering with Microsoft on a new ad supported yes. tier. Do you see Netflix kind of going direct to advertisers with Microsoft sales team? Is that competitive to you or is that additive to what you're trying to build? No, it's definitely not competitive. I think um, Netflix is in a very unique position where they have a pretty significant percentage of television viewing hours yep. that they're bringing into the television market. And so I think initially, I mean, they're going to focus on a very brand heavy strategy. But I think one thing you see is if you want to grow, if you're Netflix, if you're ABC, Disney, yeah, Disney with, a, with all their properties, ABC, sure. SBA, Disney, and stuff like that. If you want to grow, you have to bring more advertisers in the market. You cannot keep going to a few thousand, and in terms of the majority of the market, a few hundred large brand advertisers, and that's your entire business strategy. There's, right. no, there's no growth there. We have to make, that believe it or not, in some ways, television advertising is not truly a mainstream product. It's only sold to a few thousand companies. Yep. You look so at the like upfronts, it's a small doing, amount of people that are invited to the upfronts. Open it up to emerging brands, so all size brands to now be able to use this medium. And so I think Netflix initial strategy is definitely gonna be very brand heavy, but I mean, that's year one. What's, you know, year two, you're gonna, you, unless you wanna be a market share war, you're going to have to open this up and bring new advertisers in the market. And I think, and with Microsoft involved, probably with a very tech heavy approach. I mean, Microsoft is not, I don't see them being interested in becoming a television network. They wanna basically remain a tech company and, and bring more tech to the television market. Absolutely, absolutely. And I was, what I was saying, what I was adding was that you look at the upfronts and the upfronts to your point really only does invite the P&Gs of the world and the major brand advertisers right. because that's who really the market is. But you look at a company like Facebook and the majority of their advertisers are small businesses. So I think exactly. in that kind of dichotomy there, I think presents the business opportunity for Mountain. Exactly, exactly. Yep. And that's how we view it. And we feel we're leading it. So we're excited about that. And we're like all more AVOD, more ad supported television where we think is great. And we, it's not competitive at all. It's, it, we think it just makes it even easier to bring more advertisers, new, new young, emerging and mid-sized advertisers into the market. Yeah, absolutely. It makes sense. And you know, the TV advertising market is one and the television market in general has just been one that's been so dated in terms of the way it works to end. You're coming in as this new disruptor. What, what has been your path to success to date in terms of disrupting? Because we face the same thing in the market research industry where there's a bunch of sleepy legacy incumbents that we're trying to disrupt and you have a bunch of people that are holding on to the old way of doing things. But over time, you get the early adopters and you start to break through. And I'm sure partnerships like Ryan Reynolds don't hurt doing that either. Right. But what has been your playbook to be successful in, in disrupting the, the TV industry? Well, we, we, we did literally think of it that way. We, the, the way, you know, I looked at it was you've had all this innovation in the relationship between the consumer and the content, the TV network, mm -hmm. right? And Netflix and 
and Hulu kind of led that way. And, and Netflix did all these things in terms of just literally in, inventing streaming to, to a certain extent, and then doing where you can binge watch and all the things they did. And Hulu was pretty early there also. And, but the relationship between the advertiser and that TV network essentially had not changed. And even now on streaming, you see a lot of the streaming is advertising is still bought through an upfront or part of an upfront process. So we looked at that right. and said, look, we can innovate that relationship between the advertiser and the TV network. Just look at it and just ask people, what do they love about the current relationship and what don't they? We can make a big dent here. And so obviously they don't, honestly, they don't really like, the advertisers really like upfronts. They don't like spending huge amounts of money on creative. They don't like having to do media planning cycles, quarters, months to quarters in advance. They, they, just all these things. So we kind of set out just to reinvent all those things. And then it was something really simple. It's generally going to be easier to bring new companies into that market with a new approach than to convince the existing buyers that they should switch to a new approach. So that's why we focused on bringing new advertisers in the market who are very comfortable on social in particular, yeah. like paid social, bringing them over to television. And then those more traditional TV advertisers will follow. follow. And that's the strategy we pursued. And it just turned out that that what you referred to as early adopter is huge. Like when oh, there's geez. every one of those companies spending a lot, you know, focusing on paid social and paid search have been excluded from television advertising because of all those things up front and stuff like that, that that was a damn waiting to burst. And so when we launched, and I don't want to pretend like I just called this, but our whole sales cycle was just demo it to just make people where it's even possible that yeah. they can advertise on TV. And we started picking up customers. That was a, we got in front of a wave and just rode that wave by essentially guiding the path and just innovating, just take these things that are 50 years old, 50 year old business models and just reinvent them and just show people that and, and see how they respond. That, I wish it was like I could make it sound more sophisticated, but it was like build product and then show people that it's possible and, and that strategy worked. Yeah, it's a tried and true path. So let's talk about, let's shift gears a little bit and talk about your role as CEO and president of Mountain. You know, your background is in technology and engineering. What yeah. strikes me as unique about you is that you know how to talk to talk as well as being somebody who, who can obviously code and understands the technology. And yeah. that certainly makes you rare um, in the business world. All that being said, how do you spend your day? What's the pie chart of your day and what you're focused on and, and you know, what are your biggest initiatives right now? Yeah, I mean, it used to be, it's, it's actually shifted recently. It used to be really like two thirds, and if not three quarters of my day was on product. Sure. And, what does uh, that mean? Like, like actually working with the engineers like or is it in engineering standing over their shoulder? Right. Yeah, a year and a half ago was actually coding. Um, Want to wake up every morning and code. And so I'm still very involved in the product you know, engineering side of it. I kind of am personally the crossover point between kind of the business strategy and the tech strategy. Right now, I spend a lot more time on partnerships. So it's more like a 50-50 split between product focus and then customer and partnerships. And because as our brand has grown and the company has grown, I think for partnerships has, have also grown. And, um, but I always think that like every, if there's a minute of the day where I'm like, what should I spend this minute doing? It always leans towards technology. It always right. leans. Towards, That's your default. You know, what can we do better right now? We have a big focus on just, sometimes you can just focus on innovation so much that you forget to ask your customers, Hey, do you really, is everything we've already done? Is it, are you loving that? So right now we're having a big focus on just asking our customers of everything we've delivered in the platform so far, what could we do better so that, and I'm excited about that because sometimes, like I said, you can, you can just get so focused on the next feature that you don't ask everyone, like, like you serve, you serve a meal and then you're on to the next recipe. Like, let's try and do this. And you're like, wait, did every, you know, is everyone, could we make what we already have even better? And so, but it's all, it's a very, very heavy focus on product and technology and the, I, I enjoy the partnership side, but it's not like my DNA. It's my DNA is to get a computer out, 
and hang out with a bunch of engineers and, and right. embed stuff. Right. And obviously technology is expensive and you guys, thankfully you hit your timing, right? You raised just under 120 million at the end of last year. That may not be it. That might not have been as easy to do right now. What are your thoughts on growth versus burn? And, um, are you guys looking at other companies to acquire? What, what is your growth plan, um, heading into 2023? We think most of our growth comes organically. We try to grow while being really responsible on cash. So we've never been a company that has like a huge burn burn rate to drive growth. And, you know, we just focus on making sure we're, you know, hitting the right customers. Our own marketing metrics are really strong. I mean, and, and they were strong before Ryan, you know, got involved. And now you have literally the, I, I mean, arguably the world's best marketing team, marketing yeah. mountain. And so that obviously is going to bring even more efficiency. So we're, we're not generally going to just spend dollars to, to grow the company. We're going to focus on the things we've been talking about. Who's the right customer? What features do we have in the product? You know, the, the, and just delivering. And that's kind of the strategy for the company. I mean, it's keep it, all these things seem to work the best when you keep them simple. So that's, that's so what, true. What, what we're trying to do. Well, that was amazing. And you obviously have a lot going on. And again, I'm so thankful for your time and joining us at the Speed of Culture podcast. I'd love to know in this fast paced world, Mark, what slows you down personally? What's worth slowing down for uh, in your life to get away <laughs> from the madness of connected TV? Well, recently I really like the water. I'm actually, I'm in Rhode Island right now, just enjoying a summer in Rhode Island of all places. That's a really pretty state. Good for and you. And you really feel like it's a historic place to, it's the closest to like getting on a plane and going to UK that I think you can get in the United States. Like you right. feel yeah. like his, like, wait, this is not, like I'm walking through history right now. So for me lately, it's just been that I travel, a, I really, during the pandemic, I did not stay stationary. I mean, I stayed a number of places for a long time, but I traveled a bit. And, and so for me, this ability to work from home, but make home anywhere I am. Yeah. And so right now that's, you know, enjoy, I'm literally on a dock at a restaurant or just by a restaurant in, um, in Rhode Island and enjoying a summer day here while that's amazing. Talking. Yeah. That's so. amazing. You're like a duck, right? Running really quickly below the surface, but on top you're chilling. <laughs> yeah, Rhode exactly. Island, so. exactly. Love it. So well, pull out and, and, and exactly. Amazing. Well, yeah. thanks again, Mark. On behalf of Susie and Adwe team, thanks to all of our audience for joining us. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review the Speed of Culture podcast on your favorite podcast platform. Be sure to check out Mountain at MNTN.com, um, an incredible technology platform that I'm sure is going to continue to innovate in this space. Uh, so on behalf of myself and the team, thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Take care, everyone.